Okej, okay, I think we'll start. Dzień dobry wszystkim. Witam na serii webinarów Wiedza ma warstwy. Jest to wydarzenie cykliczne, które będziemy prowadzić co miesiąc. Dlatego zapraszam do obserwacji strony warstwy, przez którą Państwo już się zapisali na ten webinar. I już niebawem pojawią się tam informacje o marcowej edycji. Otóż ten webinar będzie prowadzony w języku angielskim. Powiem na początku zasady. Proszę podczas prezentacji wyciszyć mikrofony. Pytania można zadawać na czacie. Ja je będę zbierać i zadawać naszemu prelegentowi. A teraz już przełączę się również na język angielski. Welcome everyone to our webinar series Knowledge Has Layers. I'm happy to welcome today's speaker, Jermar from Selling. He will tell us about single cell isolation. And um, please mute your microphones during the webinar. You can ask all the questions on the chat. Uh, I will gather them, moderate them, uh, and Jermar uh, will, will answer them also. Um, so without any further explanation, Jermar, uh, uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Um, yeah, hi, hi, everybody, um, um, and thanks for having the chance to talk to you about single cell isolation by Cytena, um, a selling company. Um, I'm Gamma. I'm the um, director of Sales Europe for the laboratory solutions at Selling. Um, I'm based in Freiburg, Germany, and I'm with Cytena Selling now for almost um, two years. And um, with me there's Hanna um, Hanna Bertak from um, um, from the Swedish office. Um, she's the responsible person for um, all distributors. But um, as I think, as I'm from Cytina and I know the single cells a little bit um, probably more in detail, I will I will make the call. Um, so uh, let's uh, let let's just kick off. As Anna said, if you have questions, we will collect them um, via the chat and um, I will then um, answer them later. So, um, yeah, let's let, let's start. I, I think you can see my um, um, the presentation screen, um, the presentation mode. Um, I will talk very briefly about company selling and Cytina that you know, um, how this all um, comes together and, and um, where um, who we are. Um, then I will um, directly step into our single cell isolation um, portfolio from Cytina and um, we will look a little bit more um, in detail in the technology that we are using to dispense single cells and also in the main workflows. Um, our offer for the workflows, what is mainly um, a cell and development, of course, but also single cell omics. Looking at Selling, um, Selling um, is a Swedish based company that have been founded in 2016. Um, company Cytina, where I'm um, initially from, um, is a little bit older, as you can say, um, two years. So um, they um, um, went to the market in 2014. But um, as we are part of Selling, um, so Selling um, started business in 2016. Um, meanwhile, we are represented in more than 60 countries um, in um, six continents. We have nine offices and um, this is already um, obsolete because um, we acquired another company. I think there will be more offices to be added. Um, we have a team worldwide that is now within the acquisition or taking the acquisition um, and as well. I think around 500 people. And uh, we are represented in more than 1,800 labs. When you look at the portfolio of company selling, and we, I need to explain selling has two business areas. One is the laboratory solutions, where we are located in. So for all the research business, for the um, um, pharma business, and so on. Um, and then selling has another business area called industrial solutions. These guys are looking in automated systems for liquid handling on industrial scale. So we are from laboratory solutions. And what you see here is mainly the portfolio that's been offered by selling selling um, now for the um, for for research and pharma. Um, due to acquisition selling did in the last couple of years, the portfolio has become bigger and bigger. Um, selling themselves started with the 
bioprinter that you might know. Um, very um let's say simple ones like the incredibles and 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 then more advanced ones like the bio x we also have um um, light-based printing with the luminex a very big baby with the holographics very advanced technology um this is all the core business of selling um now selling acquired two companies um in the last uh, years um one first company was the spandex a company that has specialized on low volume dispensing with the um, two products iDOT and now iDOT Mini. And then Cytina, what is the heart of single cell dispensing? Um, what you see here is the single cell printer. You see the C side, B side, F side. That's all our single cell um, 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 isolation devices. The single cell printer was the first the first printer that um, Cytina launched. Um, it will be discontinued over the, um, uh, over the time now. Um, and um, at the moment, our flagships are the C side, B side, and F side. I come all to this a little bit later. Additionally, we are also looking into live um, um, cell imaging systems. Um, with the cell side x that's a product that goes into the incubator um, where you can um, um, monitor your cell growth comparable with the incu side um, but of course better um, additional to this so when we look into to the Cytina portfolio, we have our single cell dispensers. We have our cartridges that you see in the middle. That's that's one of the big um, 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 uh, or important things when we talk about single cell isolation um, um, by Cytina. On the left hand side, you also see a little product called Seabird. Um, I come to this later as well. Um, that's a micro um, bioreactor for 96 well plates. Um, to transfer the uh, two-dimensional cell culture um, after single cell isolation into a suspension culture, what um, kind of um, increases the, um, the cell growth, the cell density, and the harvest. And last but not least, um, a, a new product on board um, that we launched um, in January this year is our so-called Upside. The Upside is a um, combined instrument for single cell sorting and imaging. Um, I will explain this a little bit um, later. It's kind of a, um, yeah, um, I wouldn't say a paradigm shift but in single cell um, sorting and cell line development, but in, it combines two major steps and saves people a lot of time by using this. What the Upside is, we will see later on. Additional to our Satina products, like uh, the typical ones, like the single cell sorters, we have other products as well that all go into single cell applications. Um, um, so I talked about the upside, the I dot and the C side, the cell side you see here as well, Seabird as well. What we also launched, what also um, goes into single cell applications, mostly in, let's say, into NGS and, and uh, sequencing applications is our Sea Wash. Um, it's a plate washer um, based on centrifuge. Um, uh, so no pipetting, uh, out pipetting, really centrifuging the um, and the plates um, with the dispensing system as well. So quite straightforward. And last but not least, very new on board. Um, um, on the on the left hand side, you see the uh, Flexwell SC Rapid kits. So we are exclusive um, um, distributors now in Europe for the SQL um, library prep kits for NGS. Um, that are, th these are kits that kind of. Um, yeah, um, go straight into the Illumina um, 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 applications and uh, we start selling this right away. So what's our workflow? I, I mentioned already um, cell line development. So when you when you look into the cell line development workflow, you, you have the transfection phase and then you need to single cell, uh, you need to isolate the single cells. Um, very important is the assurance of clonality. You need to prove that one single cell is in each well um, before it then goes to the selection for productivity and the, the, the scale up. Um, the second um, 
workflow is as a um, the cultivation from examples um, example micro um, biome research so we're also able with one of our devices to sort single bacteria um, that's a little bit special because they are much smaller um, so we need a better um, kind of detection system and we need um, to have a, a little bit of different of consumables but um, uh, bottom line we have this as well and i tell you later how this works um, and last but not least, um, single cell omics. Yeah, um, so single cell isolation. As mentioned now, um, uh, we also have um, 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 products that then go into the sequencing workflow, right? So, but these are the three major, or the, the, the three main application workflows for our single cell dispensers. Um, when we look into um, the CLD workflow, so we offer the entire portfolio for um, um, cell line development. You see the upside or the F side, C side, um, um, whatever your needs is. You see the seabird. Um, then on the right side, on the left side, you see a bioreactor. We um, distribute this, but only in Germany. And um, the, on the left hand side, you see a cell analysis and counting system called CASI. We only distribute this in the Nordics. But if you are interested in these kind of products, just um, let us know and we can um, 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 make the connections. Also for the um, um, for the for the single cell um, sequencing platform, um, I mentioned already we have our single cell isolation systems. We have the sequel kits, the iDot, what is kind of um, the vol uh, low volume dispensing system. I come to these products a little bit later, and then last but not least, uh, at least for DNA purification, um, you could use the CWash. So all these things are available and launched. And um, um, and of course we have app notes for all of this, so to make sure that these systems work perfectly with each other. Well, our key customers for single cells, um, as our main um, application is cell line development or was cell line development in the past. Of course, um, let's say the the uh, the biggest pharma companies worldwide are using or most of them are using um, one of our systems um, most of them started with the single cell printer uh, we will have um, the, the first um, um, upside um, uh, placements now as well in pharma um, many of them also changed uh, onto the little bit um, more advanced platforms um, like the f side for fluorescent sorting and so on but that that was our um let's say um, um customer base now um also entering the genomics um field uh, i'm pretty sure there will be more and more universities um, on this table here as well let's look into technology how how does single cell printing work um it's not really printing right it's not um uh, that that with hard pressure we put the cell into a well it's more the inkjet technology. That's why the Saitina guys called their first single cell isolator um, uh, um, a single cell printer. Um, there's only a few things you, you need. So you need our device, um, you need your substrate, and you need our cartridge. And that's all. So you don't need any buffers, you don't need any cleaners, you don't need anything else. It's just, and your sample, of course. Uh, it's just the device and it's the cartridge that you see the very small one that you see on the left bottom corner what you see here as well is an image right on on the um, um, right upper side um, that's a nozzle image that the system permanently is showing when you start the application so there's a camera attached what you can see here there's a little camera attached that permanently image what's going on during the different dispensing steps and what you see here and that's an original image from the software is the cell it's here and the nozzle uh, the nozzle is the 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 um and the bottom part of our cartridge where the dispensing finally happens and then i said you just need your your, your substrate and then um uh, uh, the single cells can be dispensed in your wells. How does this work? Um, the dispensing principle is like, as I said, like an in, it's working like an inkjet. 
what you see here is is the cartridge i i try to make one laser point so what what you see here what you see here that that's that's the cartridge and here's the camera that um is imaging um the nozzle so the cartridge is um um made out of glass um only there's a little dispensing chip are made out of silicon um in the middle of the cartridge you have your cell suspension and we work with volumina from 5 to 80 microliter and the recommend recommended sample size is um, um 50 50 microliter that you then have also time if you need to dilute or something have a little bit space um, and then we have a piezo electric actuator here um and now it it's 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 really easy how it's working um the piston when so the, the the system is generating droplets all the time when 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 you switch on the system you always uh, click 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 so always when you hear the click um the system is generating a droplet um it's not dispensing the droplet um but it's the droplet then is always taken off by a vacuum system um and goes into a waste bin only when you start the dispensing mode of the machine then the whole single cell isolation process starts. But it's generating droplets all the time. How this works? Um, you see the piezo by electric um, 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 activation moves to, into the silicon chip, um, narrows down a little bit the cartridge and creates just a droplet. Yeah, the drop that then by gravity falls down into the well, but it does not fall very long because the dispensing module is almost on the substrate. So the the way that the, the cell, the droplet with the cell falls down is very, very short. Uh, and by using this technology, what is really gentle, we almost have no um kind of shear forces so when the piezo then when the droplet has been generated and the piezo goes back due to microfluidic systems the the sample will be moved forward within the cartridge right um there's absolutely no liquid drawn into the chip um it's a drop on demand system with very low shear forces as that we don't put pressure on the cells like let's say a fax system yeah, what is really hard and this very low shear forces um, is very important for the cell line development people because we can guarantee a very high cell viability afterwards we don't damage the cells right um, so bottom line what we have is a combination of imaging and cell sorting that has then came to the next step um with the upside system um how how do we how is it working in general so how how do we do things um there's a working principle so i said the system's generating droplets all the time right so when you start when you start the dispensing of the single cells you have to set some parameters so the parameters you set is the cell size so um, um we I say the the area here is 40 microns so we can dispense cells i would say up to 35 micrometers um it also can work with bigger cells but then it might be that they get harmed because then they will be kind of squeezed um, out of the nozzle but um i say 30 up to 35 micrometers um, cell size is absolutely no probably problem it can be also smaller when it goes really down into very small cells like bacteria um, we then have to use our bacteria sorting system where the nozzle size is only 20 micrometer good so you have to you have to set your, uh, uh, your you make the settings for the cell size and also for the cell roundness because the roundness for us is an indicator if the cell is healthy um, um, or if it's damaged and also if if the cell is a single cell or probably is two cells right so now you have put your settings you click on the bottom and the, the, the um, system starts dispensing so um, first step um, you see the image nozzle um, and in the image, when the droplet is generated, there's no cell in. So the pneumatic shutter, what you see here, is switched on. That's a vacuum system. And let's say the droplet without any cell will be taken off. Yeah. Um, next workflow is we have one cell in the 
uh, in the nozzle and it hits your parameter. So it has the right roundness, it has the right size, it counts one. Then the pneumatic shutter will be shut off and the cell will go down into the substrate. And the substrate will move to the next well. It could be that you have two cells in the nozzle. The system identifies this by camera detection. The pneumatic shutter will be on and the droplet will be taken off. It's that easy, right? Um, you can be very flexible on the system. So you can tell for each single well in a 96 or 384 wall plate, different settings. So you also can say, I want to have 100 cells in one well. Then the system will generate 100 droplets with one cell. Or you can say, I don't want to have any cells. Um, um, then the system will generate droplets without any cells. And um, so it's a very, very, very flexible system. You can, um, you can um, set up your, your applications as you want. Um, assurance of clon clonality. I said that's very important um, for the cell line development people, but also to show in single cell omics if you really only have one cell in the well, right? And that's um, why we using these images that, that we take here, um, we're using this to uh, ensure clonality. And um, these images, and I, I sh we, we take five images, these five images um, have been successfully taken by a lot of pharma companies um, in front of FDA um, to get approval for the process, right? So we take five images, um, and these images will be stored on the device. By the way, the, the device has the computer included, so the only thing you need um, if you want to work with this device is a, um, a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse. Uh, so um, it goes straight to the bench into the safety hood, and the only cable you have is the, the power cable and a cable to the monitor, and that's it. We we work with Bluetooth keyboard, so there's not even a cable for the um, for the keyboard or the mouse. It's very straightforward and it's very um, 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 space saving. So coming back to the to the um, to the pictures. So we take five pictures. The first pic or the first um, two pictures um, are um, showing the nozzle area. Um, when what when a cell is approaching the nozzle what you can see here so that's that's the cell yeah and you see this always as i say on the screen when you start the um the system um the second picture as well to see okay is it really one cell or are there two cells overlaying so fair enough it's only one cell then the next one is in the nozzle and you see here it's shining green that means for this picture, we used an F site and we detected green fluorescence. Um, so we have three three devices. It's one device it, only on bright field, and another device that um, has a laser attached, a blue laser for green fluorescence. The laser only exposes the cells when they are in the nozzle, right? Um, not to harm them by anything. So. The cells will only be laser exposed within the nozzle. Um, you can adjust the exposure time, you can it, uh, adjust the intensity of the laser. And of course, to sort your cells up front, you have to make a setting for the intensity because you normally only want the big producers, right? So um, here, this was an, um, a laser detected single cell in the nozzle. The fourth picture then shows mostly more or less the, the same <coughs> situation, <coughs> sorry, um, but it includes kind of an area of interest that's blue circles. And only if there's one cell in the inner circle, the droplet will be dispensed into the well. The last picture then shows an empty nozzle um, to prove that the droplet and the cell has left the system and has been dispensed into the well. That. The, so that's the technology, very smooth, very gentle, and very accurate. So um, we have a clonality, um, a monoclonality of 
about 98 percent within 96 and 384 well plates so that's quite high compared um let's say to to other systems especially for fuck systems due to the very gentle dispensing system we also have a very high cell viability we have um uh, for for let's say for standard applications we have three systems it's the c side the f side and the b side the c side is sad they, they're all using the same technology yeah it's always the piston it's always a cartridge it's all without any cleaning or or calibration up front um the only difference is here on the b side we are using as mentioned because bacteria is smaller we're using a different cartridge with a smaller nozzle and we have a more sensitive camera system to really identify the bacteria but that's the only difference um the c side is as i say a simple um, um, um instrument that only works on bright field detection so you cannot do fluorescence with that yeah but for a lot of applications that's by far enough the f side then has as mentioned as a laser attached it can be a blue or red laser you have to tell us the the, the um the most common one is blue to have green fluorescence if you want to have a red laser just let us know we can do this as well the only thing we cannot do is putting both lasers together so you have to make the choice up front right um there's no cleaning needed there's no cross contamination needed uh, 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 there's no cross contamination due to using consumables and disposables the cartridge so it's an a really um, hands on machine that everybody in the lab can use right um it it goes into a steri bench and um after after dispensing you just um shut it down you you wipe it probably with a little bit of ethanol yeah the waste bin what is just a small spot within the machine um you store it and that's it if you need it again you take it out of the shelf you plug it in probably wipe it and you can start dispensing the next generation then of um um, um assurance of tonality would then be the upside so as said, that's a machine that we launched the upside is not only doing these nozzle images as we saw before it's still doing this the five nozzle images but it also has a um, an, an optic a camera in place below the plate and is doing um, a well imaging during um, the dispensing um, process um, how does it work? It takes kind of pictures in layers um, from the very top down to the bottom. Um, as we're using a special focus um, um, overlay during the sedimentation, um, the cells cannot hide between the different layers. Um, so bottom line, what you get is a picture of a single cell um, from very the top down to the bottom you also can only have a bottom image or whatever um, you can adjust of course um, um, the volume so this has then an impact on time um, so if you don't fill your culture plates full stop but only half you can adjust this in the system so um, the system knows okay it just has to take I don't know how many pictures but um, um, not the full volume right um, so it's very straightforward. It's an imaging system in between. What you then finally get is two two assurances of, of clonality. So that's our nozzle image that we used before that has been approved hundreds of times by FDA. You also will get a well image. And the good thing here is if you um, are working with 384 well plates, you only have one picture per well if you use a 96 well plate then you need four pictures to um, image um, um, the well but um, that's standard and um, is absolutely no issues due to the algorithms used um, to calculate the entire picture so you will get you will get five pictures nozzle images and you will get the well images to prove clonality our um, testing so far showed that we have a 99.669%, so nearly 100% clonality rate. So there's absolutely no room anymore for any interpretation. Also, you can use the upside for colon colony tracking. Um, to be fair, the resolution of the images is not as 
in an imager that you normally have. But for our needs, for the needs of cell line development and for assurance of clonality, that's more than you need because you see all the cells, right? Uh, you can then also use, as I said, the imager again for colony tracking. Um, and so this, th this makes this whole very interesting into automated workflows, right? Where you um, don't have, let's say, um, 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 uh, normally what you have to do is when you when you do cell line development, and you you probably know this when you work in this area. So you do your single cell sorting, and then you make kind of um, you have to do images afterwards to prove really is there only one cell in. Um, there's a lot of 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 um, um, let's say. Um, steps in between, you have to take out a plate, you have to either to wait or you have to centrifuge it, then you have to go to your imager, you might need to evaluate it, you need to set it up, you have to take pictures. During all of this time, things might happen. And we realize that sometimes the wells, even they are there, you cannot image them. So because we have ghost wells or ghost cells or whatever, uh, what just came through the different working steps in between. So by com combining these working steps into one single unit, um, that's kind of revolutionary because it's much more safe, right? Um, another things um, um, are, um, so for the, and this, this is then very interesting for the automation people, um, if you want to put it into your automation workflow, for instance, is the cartridge holder. So for the C, B, and F side, um, you see here is little holes in the cartridge, and we used screws to fix the cartridge on a dispensing system. Sounds weird. Um, is If you've done it uh, two times, it's very easy, but it's difficult for automation because the robot cannot screw them out. Yeah. So here with the upside, it's just a magnetic holder. You just put in the cartridge, you close the holder, and that's it. Additional to this, and that might be interesting because that also might be available um, for, for the upside, it's, it's standard, but um, for the F side, for instance, for single cell omics it, this, or rare cell sorting, this might be interesting as well here. Um, I just need to find out how I can get rid of my eye. So um, this is what we called acoustophoresis. Acoustophoresis is a, um, a methodology that aligns cells in the middle of the cartridge to in, in improve the dispensing time and if you're working with rare samples. So how does this work? Um, I have a little video, um, but it works with, with acoustic kind of wavelengths. They, they don't harm the cells, right? It's just a, a physical way to kind of manipulate the sample in the cartridge. And it looks like this. So this is what you normally see, yeah? So we are dispensing cells and they come in very randomly and sometimes it's really hard <clears throat> because there's only, there's two cells or whatever. Now we put in an acoustic field into the, um, into the system and this happens. You see all cells come in a line. So this of course has an impact on time because um, the, the likelihood that you have one cell and not two cells is much higher here. Right? Especially when you have rare cells and you don't want to miss a cell, <coughs> this helps a lot. And this helps a lot, the system to identify a single cell. Last but not least, what we will have, um, it's not ready yet, but um, um, it, uh, what we will have is a clonality report. So an automated report that will bring all these different uh, images um, um, together um, that you can then, or that the customer then can use um, um, to prove clonality. Um, the, the images we provide anyhow, so they will be stored. Uh, so, but this clonality report is probably something that's easy to use and then can be easy used to get approval at FDA or any other um, um, instance, right? Uh, will be launched, I think, a prototype of this report. It's not that easy because the system needs to, it's not only taking pictures and copy pasting them. Um, 
as it's an auto um, automated system, um, the the software needs to kind of make a decision what pictures need to be taken, right? Um, it will be launched in 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 in, um, in April the the prototype, and then will be most likely ready to go in June July. When we're looking into speed, I think that's also very interesting here. Um, when you compare with, with other systems um, that, that are in the market for single cells, um, we are very fast. So as I said, the setup time for our systems is um, below five minutes. It's taking it out of the shelf, plug it in, start it, uh, fill the sample, put it in, click on start and done. Um, to dispense um, a 96 well played with single cells, it takes two, for the upside, two to four, depends a little bit on the medium for the F side and the C side. Dispensing a full 384 well plate takes approximately eight minutes. Um, that's optimal values, depending on the medium you're using and the sample and so on. This might take longer, it might go faster, but that's kind of a, a standard. So now if you want with the upside, if you want to include this double proof of clonality with using the, the bottom imager, yeah, this of course takes a little bit longer. So for 96 well plates, we have approximately five, four to nine minutes per plate, um, um, depending on the liquid level in the well. And for a 384 well plate, it takes approximately 24 to 50 minutes, also depending on the liquid, uh, liquid level. But always keep in mind that you don't have the extra steps, like taking the plate out, taking it into a centrifuge, or waiting hours for sedimentation, then bringing it to the imager, imaging all the wells. That's all done here within 24 to 50 minutes. Um, the shutdown cleaning time then again is less than five minutes. And I summarize the um, um, this. Um, so the the, um, the the blue parts are the upside um, specifics. Um, the the black ones, um, what you see here, are for all the systems. So first of all, we have assurance of clonality. Um, there's no room for interpretation. We have nozzle images to do this. Together with um, um, with the upside, we have a system that covers everything, um, where we also have the 3D, um, uh, 3D imaging systems with the well images. It's very fast. All the systems, it's very precise and very gentle single cell dispensing due to our, the technology we are using. But we can do fluorescence sorting. We can do 96. 384 and with the upside we will be able to do um, 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 1536 um, well plates as well um, it's really easy to operate and to automate um, it simplifies the cell line development workflows but also the single cell omics workflows you have very short setups times you have absolutely no cleaning or just very easy to clean you have absolutely no cross contamination if you put it into the automation um, you have an improved walk away time because with the upside you can do more steps in one go um, so you has a re reduced weight and transfer times between the different devices so this is for cell line development but also for single cell omics when we look now a little bit into the um, 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 single cell sequencing application and the omics application. Um, there's one thing when it comes down to single cell isolation that is a little bit tricky because if you if you dispense single cells into um, culture plates, 96 well culture plates, these plates are very straight, the wells are big and and it doesn't matter more or less where the cell hits the ground. Um, first of all, all the instruments to ensure or to take away, um, let's say, um, electricity out of um, 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 out of the system, so um, that we don't have any charges on the plates that might influence the the fall of the droplet, because we are talking about the liquid here. Um, we deioni deionizate all plates. So when you start a dispensing process, process the system is deionizating the plate to take off every electrical charges. That's one thing that is very important talking about single cell omics because we have we have conical wells. The PCR well plates are 
as you all know, are conical. The, the area where we need to hit the ground is really, really small, like one to two millimeters. Um, and that, that's a challenge, yeah, um, because you want to have your cell on the ground and not on your wall, right? For that reason, um, our engineers have developed a module called AOC for very precise cell deposition that is available, standardized in the upside, and can also be integrated into the other systems or in the F side. <coughs> AOC stands for automated offset correction um, uh, of cells into PCR, uh, PCR well plates 96 or 384. What we do is very easy. Um, before we start the dispensing process, you see um, this in the right bottom corner, um, we make kind of a picture where of the position where the droplet will be dispensed. And then we adjust the system so that the droplet really hits the ground within the, the center of the, of the well. Um, that's a one-off one, one process, so you don't have to do it per every well. It's just kind of a very fine kind of calibration of the dispensing system. You only have to do it once because the dispensing system is then fixed. But as you can see on the, on the little pictures there, without and with IOC, it really makes a huge impact. We tested it um, already um, um, at a single omics lab, of course, and it's really impressive. The drop really goes down to the ground in the middle of the PCR wells. Good. So this was more or less a little bit about um, the single cell isolation products. Um, as uh, as we, we said at the beginning, if you have any questions, um, uh, uh, just um, uh, let us know um, in the chat. Um, very briefly, I would also like to introduce you the, the products that also fit into your single cell workflows. Um, so as you can see here, as I, I, I showed before, uh, we did talk about the upside, we did talk about the C side. Um, we have another um, um, device um, that's uh, called the iDOT. Um, there's two versions available. One is the iDOT, one is the iDOT Mini. Um, how does it work? Um, the iDOT just generates droplets from 8 to 50 nanoliters um, and um, generates 100 droplets per second. Um, it works with a source plate. Um, so the source well plate has 96 different, um, 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 has 96 wells. You can choose if you want to use all 96 or if you only want to use eight or whatever. Um, the system works without any pipette tips. So it's more or less, it's not plastic free because the well plate, the source plate is plastic, but you don't need any pipette tips. Um, it, it works with a soft pressure. Um, the wells um, within the source plate have a little tiny hole at the bottom um, where then the droplets will go through depending on the pressure, right? Um, you have different viscosity stages here that you can adjust, of course, um, for, your, for your experiment. And then you can, you can choose whatever you want. You can um, 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 dispense up to 96 different reagents um, um, to feed your plates to whatever you want. It's really fast. It's easy to use. And um, um, yeah, um, and it's also, um, quite okay when you look at costs, right? Um, additionally, there's the iDOT Mini. At the moment, it has only one channel, not 96, but it's really fast. Um, we, we also used, or uh, we sold it um, um, within the um, uh, COVID test centers to dispense master kit um, into the wells. That's ideal because it's, it's just, <clears throat> need one solution and it goes really, really fast. Um, so this would be the iDOT um, that you also could use then in single cell omics workflows um, for, for library prep and so on. Um, the next little device is our sea wash. As I mentioned, it's a centrifugal liquid um, 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 removal device, kind of a plate washer with a centrifuge um, um, for washing and also for bead cleanup. It has a magnetic field as well, so you also can work with magnetic beads. Um, 
and it's straightforward. It's it's easy to use as well as all the products from Citina and Selling are really easy to use. That's one of our <clears throat> credos. Everybody should be able to use it. Um, so this then would complete the single cell workflow. Um, there's a little um, um, graph here how 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 this um, um, washer. Um, work so you can um, there's a dispenser attached so you can dispense um, into your well plates what what you want then you wash it it goes out and you can have different washing cycles and so on and so on due to time i won't go too much into detail um, to finalize the single cell kind of workflow um, i um, you might remember at the very beginning i i um, um, introduced the seabird um, what is kind of a revolution of cell culture? It's a microbioreactor for 96 well plates. Um, how does it work? Or why have have we done this? Or, um, the thing is that when you do kind of um, cell culture in well plates, <coughs> you normally do this within a, a two-dimensional growing space. Um, and you all notice over time you have gradients of oxygen and metabolites and it gets an inhomogeneous medium. Um, how cool would it be to have a 3D growing space um, within the suspension, within the, the cell culture, um, with an equal distribution of oxygen and metabolites, and also um, um, in, in, let's say, in um, suspension cells, but also for adherent cells, where you could kind of ensure that you have an, an oxygen distribution that is a kind of um, homogen. Um, normally, um, let's say, well, two pharma companies we're working with, there's two different ways to kind of scale up the whole system, um, but it all, um, so you make your single cells, uh, you have a static cell culture, then you transfer it to scale it up in a 24 well plate, and then either you go into a shaking flask or you go into a deep well plate to culture, and then you go to a bioreactor. This takes time. This takes a lot of time. The seabird steps in here and at least can reduce one step that takes sometimes days or weeks. Um, and uh, finally, straight can, after a couple of days, um, you can transfer the cell culture into the next steps. How is it working? It's very easy. Um, you see, um, you have your standard well plate with your cell culture medium, and you have a functional lid. This functional lid comes on top of the cell culture plate. Um, on top of the lid comes the control box. And what the control box is doing, it's just pumping air in and pulling it out of the well, right? So you have pressure, a pumping pressure and a suction pressure. But then, as you can see here, makes the whole cell suspension moving up and down you can adjust the speed of course yeah depending on your cells <clears throat> so you permanently mix your wells each 96 wells and you ensure that you don't have any gradients um here's a little here's a little movie of uh cho cells um that um have been um, so it's from it's filmed from the bottom of the of the um, culture plate and you see here how the cells are moving upward and downward and upward and downward. So it's more or less just mixing um, um, the whole world permanently. And uh, it's in, and it's interesting though so it comes along with three um, units. It goes just in the, into the incubator. Um, and what we could see is so we, of course, we did run tests um, with Cho cells. Um, the, the dark blue one are the static cell cultures, mm -hmm. and the light blue ones are the, the same cells, but treated with the seabird. Um, we did um, two specific cases. Case one was five days um, um, of, of culturing the cells with um, half of a million cells per ml, and the second one was three days culturing with one and a half million um, um, cells per ml. And you can see the cell density, the protein yield and the productivity of the cells are either it's nearly four times or double times faster, higher, and bigger than if you just would have a static cell culture without using our mixing system. And I think, yeah.
that's it pretty much in time so i hope i hope um it could give you a good um insight into our technologies and um, how we use our systems and um yeah now we're open for questions thank you so much that was an amazing presentation and a lot of knowledge um i think we uh yeah please ask a question uh, on the chat uh i want to thank you again uh for all the explaining uh i liked it a lot um, maybe also i'll add that everyone who has questions more specific uh, they can direct it to your email yeah. which is shown uh, on the slide in the presentation yeah. um, also please with it, the website of selling um, okay i think you explained everything too well <laughs> or too fast <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, if you have if you have questions, that's a lot of information. I know. Um, if you have questions, just reach out to 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 Anna or to myself or to Hannah. We will answer you the questions. We can do online demos. Um, unfortunately, we cannot travel at the moment, as we all know. But um, we have a showroom in our office where we can show you all the devices I showed you. Um, they are all available, so we can do an online demo here. And um, yeah, so um, still. Uh, feel free to answer um, um, any. Uh, I saw also the message of uh, the chat. Uh, Bar Bartolome uh, wrote that he is very grateful for the presentation, but uh, now he has no questions. But I think you uh, you will uh, have some on your mail soon. Uh, so yeah, you, you're right. It's uh, a lot of information. So it may be. Uh, Sometimes you need to take some time. Uh, yeah. Okay, so from now, I think I will thank uh, everybody for coming here, for listening, for uh, for be with us. And um, please feel free to contact uh, uh, us uh, here um, via the mail. Um, yeah, uh, I will send also. Uh, um, just give me a second, and the chat you will have the uh, web page uh, of our webinars. So uh, please feel welcome to visit our page because uh, uh, in March we are preparing a lot of new webinars, meetings, uh, and that will be uh, interesting and um soon uh, we will show everything uh, on our web page um, thank you again uh, and have a nice friday and have a nice time thank you thank bye. you very much bye bye thank you